Hello, good evening, and welcome to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, L.A. by Night. Tonight, we bring you Season 4, Episode 5, Pressure Lines. Let's meet our vampires under pressure. My name is Alex Ward, and I play Jasper. Hi, I'm Josephine McAdam, and I play Eva. Welcome, Vampires Under Pressure. Our special vampire guest, Shane Easton, will be joining us at a dramatically appropriate moment, as will be Dave Walters. We don't make LA by Night happen by ourselves. It's a team effort supported by an astonishing production crew, the family, and special members of our coterie. We'd like to thank Backblaze for their continued support. They're an important member of the team because they make it possible for us to bring LA by Night to you for this entire season. Backblaze offers secure cloud storage with an easy system to retrieve your files in the event of a second Inquisition disaster at your haven. All those videos, all those Word documents, all that LA by Night fan art can be retrieved quickly and easily for a very low subscription price of $6 a month. Give them some love at backblaze.com slash LA by Night. And speaking of Backblaze, you'll be seeing Yev very soon. We'd also like to thank Level Up Dice. Level Up is sponsoring us this season, and you'll know them from the amazing official Vampire the Masquerade beautiful metallic dice that they make for each and every clan, all the factions, and even those thin bloods that everyone seems so worried about. To get your set of authentic Vampire the Masquerade dice, visit them at levelupdice.net. Thank you, Level Up. The kindred are not unlike mortals in one very important respect. Their traditions and customs have a profound effect on their existence. The heart of each and every night for a kindred is choice. And the risk inherent in choice comes from the potential consequences stemming from every decision, good and bad. To help mitigate these risks, the kindreds, all factions, all clans, invent rules, laws, customs within their social and political groups. Customs, rules, and laws that the kindred invent are very simply predetermined consequences for particular actions. And this is more true in some clans than in others. With this very firmly in mind, let's tell a vampire story. Thank you. 
it's been a busy week for our kindred. Just a few nights ago, Annabelle and Kyoko met their first thin blood. They also ran into Carver, Annabelle's sire, and the scourge, Aurora. The very next night, Eva, Jasper, Kyoko again, and Greg descended into the labyrinth to test the black mirror that the weird sisters have repaired. The night after that, Victor, Annabelle, Jasper, and Eva, and Kyoko dealt with the implications of those previous two incidents. That same night, Nines Rodriguez paid a call to discuss what happens when a baron steps away from his barony. This is the very night after that. It's early. The sun hasn't been under the horizon too long yet. We begin this night in that self-same labyrinth with Eva and Jasper. Now, before we begin our story, some housekeeping. Is anyone still hurt? Uh, no, I didn't take any damage. There must be some mistake. <laughs> I know, right? I know what those words mean individually, Jasper, but when you put them together in that order, I'm afraid they lose all meaning. It is a, it is a peculiarity, but it's true. Mm. Let's see how long that lasts. Mm. <laughs> Eva, I believe you are also at full health? Yes. Yes. Now let's talk about your hunger. Uh, at the end of last night, I was at three hunger. Make a rouse check for tonight. I'm okay. So you're standing at three. Standing at three. Eva? I'm good. I'm at one still. Still one hunger. Must be hard keeping the beast at bay like that all the time. Mm. <laughs> My understanding is that your plan is to attempt to deal with the pest infestation in your basement. Yeah. All right. That's Tell me a little bit about how you're preparing for this. Uh, well, I have the Rothfuss pistol that B. Dave gave me. Okay, so that is the special pistol that uh, Victor confiscated. Yes. Actually, that was gifted to him by Ramona. That's right. That she confiscated from the Second Inquisition. Right. Uh, Victor nor Jasper made any um, inquiries to how many actual bullets are in the gun. It's very fortunate, then, that I can tell you. <laughs> The so gun has a total of eight rounds of ammunition. It's good to now, you know. have seen what they do to Kindred. Mm -hmm. Eva has informed you that gargoyles are a sort, sort of, of kindred. kindred. Um, Therefore, it stands to reason the gun may be effective on the creature as well. But Jasper's knowledge is also that stone doesn't light on fire very well. So in the event that the Rothfuss pistol does no uh, there's, you know, damage at all or is ineffective, he has brought a sledgehammer. Something he knows works on stone. Very effectively, usually. Yeah. Stone, concrete, kindred. Yeah. Labyrinths. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, any other special preparations for Jasper? Uh, that Jasper has made himself? Uh, no. Uh, I believe Eva has warded my coat. Yes. His hoodie. His hoodie. Okay, and you got um, you got a critical critical success. Yeah. On the ritual warding roll, is that right? That's correct. Okay. Eva, any special preparations? Yes. Also, prepared Firewalker on Jasper as well. Oh, good. 
probably need that. For myself, a deflection of wooden doom. Just a regular, no crit. I have Firewalker and a ward against vampires on her shirt. And two Essence of Air potions. Two Essence of Air potions. The ward against vampires was also a critical success. That's correct. I think you're out of those convenient healing elixirs, however. As far as I'm aware, yeah. Mm. Okay. Any other preparations you'd like me to be aware of? Uh, Other than my intention to uh, blood surge when, if (laughs) and when combat is initiated. Yes, Eva's blood potency is increased by one. Okay, noted. I have all the notes. Great. Wonderful. Let's begin then in front of the black mirror in the labyrinth. Okay. Here we are again. Yeah. Do you have everything you want you need? Yeah, I think so. Well, uh, do you also have that... You still have that uh, thing you got from Greg, right? Yes. Yes. I do. That's, uh... Do you... Should you have this, or should... Are you... Are you good at throwing? No, I'm with my mind. Do you want me to have it? Maybe you should have it, okay. Right, I'll take it. I put it in my bag. That's a terrifying prospect. I have a napalm grenade in my bag now. I do you, I can hold it. No, it's you fine. It's, 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 yeah, I, I'm not going to be far enough away from you that it wouldn't affect me anyway, so... Is this, um, is this a good idea? I mean, I know it's not a good idea, but like, I mean, in terms of everything that's happening. I mean, I obviously, this is what I want to do. This is simple. I, I know how to do this. This is great. One problem, get rid of problem. I think... They struck first by putting it in your labyrinth. I don't. I yeah. don't think that this is. I don't think we could be at fault here. Yeah. We're just defending I, ourselves. I, I don't. I agree. But I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, yeah. I just. You know, when it comes to Strauss, I. Honestly, I don't care if it... I know. Okay. I know you. I understand. And you're right, it's probably not smart. No, but neither is almost anything I do. I mean... What uh, feels good and feels like you're supposed to do and what's smart are usually two different things. Now, I'd like to point out and verify that you have chosen to go by yourselves. You have not brought we have not any, brought anybody with us. Anyone, not even not even a Campbell or a Bailey. No. Uh Jasper would um assume they would just die. Should we um tell anyone before we go? That's probably smart. Just in case. Who's the best person to tell that won't immediately cause panic. If we tell Annabelle, she'll want to come. Yeah. Uh, Well, maybe not the specifics then. Um, Yeah. Just... uh, Victor, perhaps? I guess. I can text him. Okay. If it gets, you know, it's his body down here. We'll see if it gets through. At least I tried. And I'll text Victor and just say, hey, we're going to take care of that thing, in quotation marks. 
And that's it. Victor texts back. Cool, cool, cool. Smiley face. And then another text. Watch out for it's the little wizard emoji. It's a little wizard in a wizard hat. He says, okay, and to watch out for other Tremere. Yeah. Either that or Merlin, I don't know. <laughs> you never can tell with Victor. God, I've got the the gun Victor gave us, but if that doesn't work, I'm just going to start hitting it. That. Okay. Now it is entirely possible that the little emoji wizard has preceded you. You will recall that last night you received texts, warnings from both Victor and Annabelle, yeah. claiming that the Tremere were on their way, but you saw nothing. Yeah. You saw no evidence of anyone else entering the labyrinth. Yeah. Perhaps the warning was premature. Well, that's now twice we've gotten warnings that they're on the move and on their way and we haven't actually seen them. Curious. As I will, um, you sense the unseen or activate that just in case anything's been left behind or... <clears throat> You are activating it while you are on the black side of the mirror, right? Yes. Would I need to do it again once we pass through, or? Not unless something happens. Okay. So, please make a roll of wits and aspects. Since it's not something specific, may I use resolve? It's a better roll for you. Yes. I will allow it. Thank you. Three successes. Three successes. You used all your good rolls earlier. Mm-hmm. Where, are those, where are all those critical successes now? I know, right? Mm. Where is your crit now? So. You let your gaze range about the stone walls of the labyrinth, <coughs> lingering on the black mirror, even on the ground. You don't see anything that wasn't here before. Okay. Should I, um, uh, should I open it? Yeah. So we can see, see first. Yeah. Yes. I take the key out. You withdraw that large, mm -hmm. black, unsettling key. This might hurt again. I don't know. Maybe it was the effect of it reconnecting. I don't. I don't know. But here we go. Mm -hmm. And I twist. Place the key in the mirror, mm -hmm. and you twist. Now, the last time you did this, just a few nights ago. There was a very unpleasant sensation. Yeah. It was actually damaging. Yeah. There is no such sensation this time. Okay. All right. Turn the key. The glossy black surface of the mirror fades, revealing the chamber beyond. The chamber where the Nosferatu and Torpor once lay on a stone slab, which is now empty. The chamber where you recently encountered the gargoyle and the disgusting severed hand, eyeball, whatever it was. Yeah. What you see in the chamber now is nothing, no gargoyle, no hand. The black canvas duffel bag from which you released the hand creature is lying crumpled on the stone floor. The other two duffel bags, which you picked up, liberated and picked up, of course, are in the corridor beyond. Elsewhere, yeah. Now, Eva, you are using 
sense the unseen to see the invisible world, you can see the ley lines now. You can see those fine glowing red traceries that lace through the air like some sort of supernatural cobweb collecting central point above the stone slab. Whatever else has happened here, they are still intact. Now, were this any other room, I would say that I would go in, make the thing appear, mm -hmm. run, and then you throw the grenade. But I don't want to hurt the ley lines. I don't know what fire will do to them. Yeah. So ultimately, if it comes to using the grenade, using fire, um, I'd rather do it not in that room. Yeah? Yeah, agreed. Okay. If, um, if anything happens to me, I found out where Strauss's Haven is. Oh. Good. Okay. That was what you got from Gary, right? Yes. Yeah. It's a magic castle. <laughs> but I need you to know that, too. All right. Okay. Of course it is. <sighs> Ready? No, but all right. I'm going to activate Zeus's fury ahead of time. Just to envelop. So you are going to cast the, well, activate the ritual with yeah. power, I should say. Success in the Raz roll. Mm, if you, I mean, I know we were planning on doing this anyway, but. If you do, uh, if something does happen to you, I'll make sure the uh, castle comes down. Good. It's always a little disconcerting to see the play of electricity around and on Eva whenever she does this particular magic trick. Little tongues of blue, white, electrical power snap between her fingers, spark in her hair, curl about her arms. You know, I feel like you were holding out on me when you taught me some stuff. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know you as well, but... Fair. I pull out the pistol. This is... A check to make sure the safety is off. Off and it's loaded. It is loaded. The safety is off. This is a lot less impressive. No, that's terrifying. Yeah, I know. All right. All right. Let's go. Okay. Uh, either you first or second. I, I'm going to try not to get close to you. Yeah. I'll go first. So, the powerful electrical static charge already built up on your body. Yes. Are you going first? Yeah. Yes. So, you experience that familiar sensation of falling away into nothing. It never gets easier because it is so fundamentally wrong. It is completely antithetical to every kind of life and undeath. Maybe this is what the La Sombra experience every time they use their strange, bizarre powers. And if so, then you know that you never want to learn those abilities if this is what you would have to endure. It's too bleak, too empty too annihilating. It's over, not soon enough, but it's over. 
as you step through into the antechamber. As soon as she stepped through, I activate uh, Unseen Passage. Mm -hmm. So. And I succeed in my rouse check. And your beast is disappointed. I know. And then I step through. And then you too fall away into blackness, passing through the void. You're never gonna get used to this. No matter how many times you do it, it's always going to be a bucket of suck. It reminds you too much of sorrows, past, regrets, things left undone, dreams never realized, hopes never fulfilled. It's never over soon enough, but it does end, it does end eventually as you emerge next to Eva in the ley line chamber. Eva, you are still using unseen senses, I believe, a sense the unseen. Yes. So you can still see the ley lines. You do not see anything else that is unusual yet. I'll uh, start walking towards where it was last, near the archway. You remember that it emerged from the stone wall next to the archway that marks the only other exit yeah. from this place. You can't go back to the mirror. It doesn't exist on this side of the wall. It has to be that passageway. Stepping carefully, checking the floor, making absolutely certain that it's not anywhere underneath you. You reach the wall and the archway. It isn't there. I can't see it at all. However, you are now on the opposite side of the slab, the slab side facing away from the black mirror. So when you turn back to tell Jasper that you can't see it, that is when your preternaturally sensitive eyes pick up the strange, almost ripple-like disturbances on this side of the stone slab. It's almost as though the Stone is beginning to move like water. Slab, slab, Jasper. I circle around as far from the slab as possible. So you're circling around onto Eva's side. Uh, if she imagine it as a imagine it as a uh, an eye a, a, a rectangle. Rectangle. Okay. So and. The rectangle, the slab is on one side, mm. one of the long sides of the rectangle, and Eva is at the end of the rectangle. Yeah, rectangle is the slab. Rectangle is the slab. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Eva's on one side, and you're on the... I will be on the uh, a side that is uh, perpendicular to where she is, so that I'm out of the mm. Geometry. Of fire. Geometry. Sure enough, emerging from the stone itself, the gargoyle almost flows out of the rock. Huge, craggy, almost granite-like. One moment it's in the stone, and the next it's standing there in the chamber. When you fought it previously, things were happening so fast, you didn't get an appreciation of how big it is. In fact, it may actually be bigger now. It towers over you with its huge, broad shoulders blocking out the far side of the chamber. It's almost bat-like wings beginning to spread outward. The wingspan 
far wider than you could reach with both your arms. It does not attack you. It merely looms above. What do you want to do? I'm gonna drop my unseen passage. You'll become visible? Yeah. I guess, I just don't. It looks different, huh? You recall that you struck it previously with Zeus's fury. You heard it. When you left here, it was covered in black scorch marks, scarring, mm-hmm. damage. Some of that is still visible. No, it's the same one. But. Not all of it. Do we just go for it? Yes. It doesn't have its own will anymore anyway. Okay. I'll unleash this. I just shoot. You fire the Ralphus pistol and Eva lashes out with the electrical fury of the storm. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, pistol and storm at the same time, orange and blue, creating a huge, massive fireball, conflicting light. Great. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is five successes. For five me. successes on the pistol shot. Mm-hmm. And you were lashing out with Zeus's fury. I rolled it early. It just got uh, regular. So Normal successes. Okay. Which is three Lightning yeah. arcs from your fingertips, connecting you and the gargoyle. The thing rears back, bending backward almost double as the lightning strikes it in the wings, the chest, the arm, and then the Ralphus pistol practically explodes in your hand. You are at point blank range. Great. Straight in front of you. <laughs> willpower. Roll all your unspent willpower oh. for fire. Two successes. Two successes. Three. Jasper, you flinch and stagger backwards, your beast urging you to run. Get out of here, get out of here, go, go. We're gonna die, we're gonna burn. I don't plan to go this way. I will not be a crispy critter for your girlfriend. Get me out, get me out. Do it. Jasper. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Oh, I fucking hate you. That's a lot more than I thought. Now the gargoyle has been struck. He bent backwards with the fury of the lightning and forward with the power of the Ralphus pistol. Now you have seen this weapon burn down a vampire. Practically immolating it from the inside out. That is not what happens to the gargoyle, but, but the explosive round blows a massive chunk out of the creature's spine, its back, Part of its left wing. That was a lot. It doesn't scream in pain this time. Its mouth opens. It tries to make a noise, but no sound comes out of its stone jaws. The black, scorching marks of lightning now cover its entire front, its face, and the inside of its right hand wing. It is now the gargoyle's turn. It hops backwards up onto the top of the slab. Jasper, you were never surprised because of your reflexive power. Yeah. So you're able to turn around in 
in time to see the stone stalactite appendage spike <laughs> burst out of the chamber floor at your feet in an attempt to impale you. I will attempt to dodge. Dexterity and athletics. You're going to need a pretty wide margin. Copy, copy, copy. <laughs> I'm burning a willpower to reroll. Uh, expending a willpower, you can reroll up to three regular dice. Okay, that is five successes. Five successes. Okay. Five successes is good. You take only two points of superficial damage Great. from the sharp rock tearing through your thigh, your calf muscles, and knee. All right. All right. In addition, the gargoyle's huge wings begin to beat forward, creating a huge draft of air that pushes against you, Eva. If you want to maintain your footing and not be hurled against the far wall, I need you to make a roll of stamina and athletics. Enjoy. <laughs> not exactly your best idea. No, not at all. I couldn't use movement of the mind. That's the gargoyle's turn. Right. When it's your turn, okay. you can do what you like. One. One success. <laughs> That's a crit. Great, great. Half a crit. Great, great. This is going great. Your entire health track is yep. filled with superficial damage. <laughs> All five. Yep. Any more superficial damage you take will convert the first box into aggravated damage. You lose your footing, you spin head over heels as though you're caught in uh, a whirlwind, a mini tornado, and you are thrown against the far wall of the chamber oh, until you smash hard. You feel bone crack in your arms, leg, back of your skull. Now on the stone slab, the creature appears decidedly the worse for wear. Okay, okay. It is at this point when other figures step through the mirror. You recognize the first one, Katya. What? The other two behind her, a man with a neatly trimmed black beard, thick dark hair, purple shirt, and a woman, with shoulder length, brown hair, an attire that looks like she probably ordered it all from the Killstar catalog. <laughs> you don't recognize. Okay. Gotcha, you and your associates can take the next turn, and then we start the round again. What do you want to do? Well, I tell Vera and Bosch that we're gonna hit this rocks for brains where it hurts. I pull my knife out of my boot, and I throw it at the monster. Make a roll. Make the pull out of dexterity and athletics. Add three dice to the total pool. One of the dice is a hunger die. Add three. Add three additional dice. Three. 
And I get hungry. It's fine, that one's good. Oh, really? That doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Well, just no, kidding. it's just a Nora. The hunger die failure is a normal failure because the rest of the roll is a success. So you're good there. Uh, the knife flashes through the chamber air, strikes the creature square in the back. Now, a normal knife, not very effective against stone. Yeah. Maybe this isn't a normal knife because the blade buries itself up to the hilt <sighs> in the creature's back. It shivers. Ah. Bosch and Vera, they move away from you on opposite sides, standing against the walls opposite from each other. From underneath his coat, Bosch takes out a crowbar. He steps in and begins beating the thing on the legs. Vera conjures up a ball of fire in her hand. Now you've seen this trick before. And almost as though she's blowing it a kiss, sends it spinning through the air to strike the creature. Unfortunately, Bosch's crowbar not too effective. A glancing blow at best. The creature barely notices. It cannot ignore the magical fire, however. And you marvel for a moment that stone can actually burn. The creature now is in terrible shape. It's gone down to both knees and one clawed hand. Vera has burned away part of its right wing. If it could fly ever, it probably can't now. Jasper, what's your intent? Uh, my intent is to, uh, using uh, my rapid reflexes, to pull the sledgehammer, blood surge, and just over the head smash. Blood surge requires a rouse check. It does require a rouse check. I'm okay. No, I'm more hungry. Eva, what's your intent? I'm going to use Zeus's fury once more. I too will blood surge beforehand, though. Rouse check. I'm good. I'm gonna go look good. You may well. The sledgehammer, well, the handle is wood. Yeah. The head is metal. Yeah. Yeah. The gargoyle's <laughs> intention is going to be to try to escape this unhappy scene. What is Katya's intention? I'm going to try to get the gargoyle to come towards me and away from them. You're trying to distract it? Mm -hmm. Are you moving around into its line of sight? I'm screaming at it. That I'm brings saying. you quite close to Eva, who is rippling with electrical power. I'm trying to draw him away from her towards me. Your associates, Bosch and Vera, will continue to carry out their instructions as well. So, Jasper, blood surge. Okay. Make the melee roll. Eva, Zeus is fury. Uh, roll for the gargoyle's attempt to escape. Okay, all right. That is seven successes with whatever damage your sludge hammer does. <laughs> Is it seven? That's actually because of my potence. That's that's ten. Ten successes. Because I critted. Never. Eight, but it's just a regular. So three ag. Just a regular. <laughs> Merely three aggravated damage from the pure power of natural lightning coursing from a blood witch's hands, arcing through the air, smashing into the gargoyle's face, shoulders, both its wings. Gargoyle was starting to sink into the stone slab upon which it was standing. 
it managed to get about halfway into the stone before the combined attacks of its assailants, sledgehammer, the knife, fire, crowbar, and the lightning. Bring it down. It ceases to sink away. Its wings vibrate once, twice, and then droop. It slumps forward from the shoulder, still half frozen in the stone, and is completely immobile. If you hadn't seen it move with your own eyes, you would think it nothing more than a statue. Do I take any residual effects from the lightning being that close? Your weapon is made of metal and wood. And wood. I think Bosch is the one who's actually going to take the damage because of the metal. iron crowbar yeah. that he was smashing the gargoyle with. Great. So, or Bosch, unfortunately, also falls to his knees. His beautiful purple shirt and cool jacket, a smoking ruin, burn marks across his limbs, some of his beautiful black beard singed away. He's in a lot of pain. Vera leaves her post, crosses the chamber, bends down to see if there's anything that she can do. And she looks at you, awaiting instructions. What do we do, boss? Is he all right? Are you all right, boss? Yeah, I'll be, I'll be, yeah, yeah. Are you okay? Uh, yeah. I, oh, shit. Do you guys ever think before you do anything? I immediately point the Ralphus pistol. Do you ever think pistol. about other people? You're pointing the Ralphus pistol at her? Obviously not. What are you doing here? Vera leaves Bosch's side and stands next to Katya. This is a dangerous place. I know, I live here. Oh, you live here? He lives here? You live here? Vera seems both puzzled and amused. What do you mean you live here? I what does he mean? Live here. You are in my home and I want you out. This is not your home. Haven't you ever heard of IKEA? This, this was I'm sure this was built long before you it ever was. came through here. No one was here, so I made it my home. <laughs> I'm gonna step in front of Katya so that I'm in the way. I put the gun away. She helped us, Jasper. Man, I can't believe you live here. This place sucks. Yeah. It's very fascinating if you have the right mindset. Oh, I agree with you. It is fascinating. It's it's one of the most beautiful metaphysical structures I've ever seen. Yeah. But you do not know what you are doing here. And we're in a truce right now. I know. You all left us here. In my house. You know, I, I hate to be a bother. I, yes, no, we, we're, but... let's get you help. Uh, Vera, do you have the... Um... Yeah, I do. Please give it to him. Really? Yes. Okay, 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 boss. I... Fine. Vera reaches into her tall boot and she pulls out a knife. Your knife. The one you thought was lost to you. Ah, I can't believe I'm doing this. Give it to Here me. Here you go. I, I don't bite. Well, I mean, yes, but... Why on you, earth would you give this back to me? You are welcome. I know. Thank Manners, you. right? I appreciate it, but I am very skeptical. That is your knife, isn't it? Fair. Yes, You're, it is. Okay. There you go. Okay, hold on. Can we pause this for a second? Right. Oh yeah, totally, totally pause this thing. No, please, just Bosh, go, go get help, go. 
be oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'll handle this. Can I take him back? I'm sorry. Mm. How do I get out? Uh, you just go through that door. Yeah, it's a little more complicated than that. There's a whole... I'll figure it out. We've got the notes. We've got the notes. Yeah, good. <sighs> okay, uh, Bosch, come on. Let me help you. Uh, Vera gets an arm around Bosch and helps him stagger to his feet. You can see that um, some of the skin underneath is exposed. Listen. <sighs> Fuck. Don't. On your way out. Be careful of the floor. Careful of the floor? When you head out towards, I assume your notes are taking them out towards the old meat, the butcher. I assume that's where your notes are taking them? Yeah, if we yes. follow, according to the, she uh, she pulls out a cell phone. Yeah. And she calls up uh, a photo gallery. And uh, you can see that she's looking at photographs of the labyrinth. Great, awesome, so amazing. We've got a, uh, a path to follow. Yeah, so it's, it's different right now. She shows you the photograph. That looks correct. There are traps in place. Badass. Yeah, you don't want to get staked. Don't step on parts of the floor. That's kind of Indiana Jones, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay, be careful. Here, will you be all right? All right. I think so. I'll, 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 um, I'll, I'll text you if we get in trouble. Okay. Or, or, or I guess you'll hear me scream if I get staked. Oh Lord, I hope not. Slowly. Come on, boss, let's get out of here. Slowly. Move slowly. Slowly. Move slowly. Okay. See you around, Eva. Bye. Hey. Bye. <laughs> No sense of humor. Okay. Vera helps Bosch leave by the passageway. And soon their echoing footsteps are lost in the darkness. Um, how did you, what are you doing down here? Gotcha. Well, I, colleagues told me that someone was back in the labyrinth messing around with someone being you and uh, Mr. Hartwood. Look, th this is a very dangerous place. Yeah. I know. And you, you fixed the mirror? Yes. Why? Because this is my place where I live and where I spend most of my time figuring it out. And so I broke the mirror. I wanted to fix the thing I broke. That's why. I understand that's very admirable of you, but it doesn't seem that when you come down here, things always go very well, does it? It generally seems when I bring other people down here, things don't go very well. Oh. Don't, I'm not, I'm not going to hurt you. Thank you. Thank you for helping us. I appreciate it as well. I'm a little confused, but I appreciate it. As to why you are helping. Well. <sighs> Garrick. Um, yeah, I remember him. He started doing things for his own purposes. Yeah. And not for the Tremere. Yeah. He placed that gargoyle down here and he cut off his own hand. Is, is the hand still down here? No. Well, technically, yes. It's dead. Is there only one? There's only one. Okay. Um, but he did that against our wishes. What was that? 
it was recently, probably not too soon before you came down here and discovered them. Okay, okay. But you do not have to worry about him ever again. <laughs> because I'm going to be taking his place. Oh, good. As what exactly? I'm, I, you know, I will be taking on his responsibilities. Okay. And he was the, uh, yeah, forgive me if I get this wrong. I, he was the, um, whatever they call the, the head of your clan in court, correct? Or was I, that Strauss? Or was he keeper of Elysium? Look, these, these, these titles, <laughs> I don't really want to talk about them with you. No offense. But this is something that's in between great. us and, and our, our pyramid. And great, 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 great. But what I do want to say is that we're really not all that bad. Um, I, I, I wanted to give you some advice, too. Yes. This truth is probably the best thing that ever happened to the Camarilla because you Anarchs Are losing it. You um, always need something to rebel against in violence, so then you turn on each other. You're probably not wrong. I haven't been around long enough to experience it. The truth means nothing to me. I'm oh, not really? particularly involved in politics as long as I can, at least if I can help it. Yes. Well, I just wanted to help both of you. Eva's very important to me. Okay. Okay. And I would appreciate it if you would protect her as best you can. I do. And Eva, I would appreciate it if you would keep yourself out of danger as well. You are a full grown. Look, just act your age. Look, I don't, I'm very, I'm still very, very confused. Why? The last time we met, it seemed very much not in um, your interest to help us, or me specifically. And now you come down here, you help us fight that thing, you give me back this thing that I had lost. It's very important to me. And now you're trying and telling us to be careful, I'm a little confused. You are part of the Camarilla, correct? You do work under Strauss, correct? I do work under Strauss. But Strauss and myself and, and many of us, we are Tremere first. Right, great. No, I understand that, I get it, I get it. As many of us are ourselves first and Anarch second. I'm no Anarch. Oh, really? Just not Camarilla, either. Some of us just want to be left alone. And that's obviously going very well. Yeah. It is. We've got... It's Garrick going hadn't left that down there. We'd be fine. We've come down here before. You would not be fine because you do not know what these ley lines can do. Sure, I'm sure they do something. I have some idea. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm sure they do something. Are you kidding me? What do they do? Maybe. Why don't you tell us? Screw Anarch. Screw Camarilla. If you, if you mess with this thing, it alters. Goodbye, everybody. Yeah, it can affect the whole 
Mm. Planet. Or at least the city. The city, the soul of the city. Yeah. And gathered as much. It is something that people would want to use to, say, get rid of potential enemies, targets, structures, things like that. It is something the Camarilla wants to hold on to because it gives them power. It is something that I want to just remain neutral and unused. When the mirror was broken, nobody could mess with this. I can now easily if... get rid of the mirror again. I'm sorry? I could easily get rid of the mirror again if that's what it takes. I came back down to check. There used to be someone here. Yeah. And now he's with you. Yes. And I came back down to check on him, to check on what was left, to check on everything. I can easily shut this place down again. Who is he? Celios. Have I... I know who that is. You do. <laughs> he is by reputation. He's Zelios. <clears throat> yes, I don't know anybody else with that name. The entire time. I... <laughs> I'm a moron. <laughs> <sighs> oh, I'd very much like to talk to him. That would have been... I wish he would have woken up sooner. Spent all this time being scared of him. I walk over the ley lines. So you cross the stone chamber to stand underneath the matrix of energy lines that meet at the point above the stone slab, which is now occupied partly by a gargoyle statue. Yeah. Darling, what are you doing? Just looking. It's what I came here for. I'm just looking. Don't touch it. She knows what she's doing. I've done it before. I'm going to touch the ley lines and search for the magic castle. So, all the ley lines, of course, look alike, yeah. and it's an extensive web. I remember finding the general area where you touched last time, probably not difficult. Locating the exact ley line, a little more challenging. I remember let's, it was a little more powerful. Let's, um, let's make a roll of intelligence and occult. That's a good roll for you. <laughs> to burn a willpower. That was, that was impressive. And burning a willpower to reroll up to three regular dice. Cannot reroll the hunger die. Three successes. Three total successes. Uh, you let your fingers do the walking. Your fingertips brush against. No, no, that's not right. That's Santa Monica Pier. No, no, not that one either. That's the observatory. Although it's nearly as powerful as the one that connects to the magic castle, which you find on the third try. You feel that same familiar sensation, the same thrum of power in your fingertips, your hand, your wrist, your forearm. And you can see in your mind's eye the structure that the mortals call the magic castle the strange entertainment venue in Hollywood, Baron Nelly's territory now. Yeah. It looks like a Victorian mansion sitting there on its hill 
overlooking the neighborhood. You can see cars pulling up to the ballet. You can see mortals dressed in their finery, eager for a night of mystery and enchantment, pausing to have their photos taken at the step and repeat by the red carpet. The doorman welcoming each and every one of them as he checks their names against the list. It's a lively night. And you can feel the power coming from the place. Maybe it's a joke, maybe it's just warlock hypocrisy, but the magic castle is not an ordinary place. From what I remember last time at the Getty, I had just grabbed the ley line. That's right. I'm going to do that again. You want to grab the ley line. Do you remember also what happened yes. when you grabbed the ley line last time? Yes. Do I see her grabbing the ley line? She does curl her fingers around it. I put my hands on her. Hey. Not really the time. As your fist closes. Not, I'm assuming no. you're not letting go. As your fist closes. Not the time. You can feel they a vibrating us. jolt arc through the line. Satisfyingly strong pull. And I, I pull her off. You're gonna try to set, break her grip. Yeah. Katya, are you doing anything? Um, I see him start to pull her off and I start to pull her off as well. Do you resist or do you let them pull you? I resist. You resist. So oh. here we go. Jasper yeah. and Katya, you need to make rolls that are strength mm -hmm. and brawl. Great. Eva, you need to roll all your unspent willpower. Three. Three successes. Katya, four successes. Seven successes. Seven successes. So, multiple things happen at once. You get a good grip on that ley line. You take a point of aggravated damage, <clears throat> psychic backlash, as you activate the power in these natural connections to the city, to the world. In your mind's eye, you see the ground on which the magic castle stands shake, quake. One of its cupola windows bursts open in a shattering of glass, the cupola cracks and falls away from the edifice, smashing to the ground below, nearly striking several mortals who are emerging from their car in the valet lot. More windows begin to blow out in succession. Smash, 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 smash. You can see a crack, a fissure, appear in the building's foundation before they successfully pull you away and you release your grip. <laughs> Your hands where you touched it are scored with a red line. Oh. They are smoking. What did you do? She is being an idiot. What did you do? She caused an earthquake under the magic castle. What? I text, uh. I text my colleagues. Is everything okay over there? You know what you did, right? You just broke the truce. They broke the truce. They didn't. Garrick broke the truce. If they had broken, if they had broken the truce with what they did, they would already be on us, and they're not. No. Do you know why we've been staying at the castle? No. We made a deal with Abrams. Abrams isn't here anymore. I know. Katya, you received several text messages back. First one is from Jensen who says, uh, earthquake, nobody hurt, closing for the night. The second one is from Samantha and says, magical surge, trying to narrow it down. Are you okay?
They don't have to know it was me. They know it was a magical surge and they know what this place does. They know. If I know, they know. I'm an idiot compared to them. So if I know, they know. Now, I don't think. Do you know what you're gonna have to make me do? I've already been sticking my neck out for you. The only reason you are not resting in your final death is because I have been protecting you this whole time. There are people that knew I was coming here because they knew that you were here and you were here. Tell them. Tell them oh. what? What possible thing could we tell them they're going to believe if it I wasn't If you guys, us? I would go now. I would run. Yeah. Probably smart. See, it was an accident. We didn't know how to use them. Go I need to hide. I need to go. I need to go. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Samantha texts you. Boss wants to know what's up. What do I do? Uh, Can you okay. take her somewhere safe, Eva? Where? I am asking you. I, I, maybe I can tell them that the the, the gargoyle. It during the altercation. The gargoyle tripped you and or tripped me. You can say it was me. They already hate me. No. What? No. We're not saying it was you. I can do my own thaumaturgy. What? I just text back uh, during a fight with Garrick's toys, a ley line was pulled. A few moments later, Samantha texts back. Copy that. Do you have it under control? Yes. I need to talk to Victor Temple. All right. I can take you to him. Yeah. We can do that. Thank you. Just lay low for a while, please. For yeah, your sake. I will. Sorry. Do you know how to get out of here? Gotcha, you have the same photographs that uh, Garrick supplied. I'll take so you. I'll you have that map. Take you out. You'll walk me out? Yeah. It's not necessary, I have- It's faster if I walk you out. Should we all go together? Yeah. Mm. I, uh, or I can wait. It's, you know the way. Okay, let's go. All right. So I'll lead her towards Jasper. You were leading Katya to the back door. Yeah. Eva, are you accompanying them? I look at the ley lines. Hmm. You're pretty sure that this time 
you can find the one you want without hesitation. I turn and go with them. You turn, follow them. The route to the exit is at first as disconcerting as the journey in, but eventually gives way to normal access tunnels, maintenance corridors, places that are still dingy, dirty underground holes, but they aren't as strange and bizarre as the cyclopean pit of weirdness that you've traversed to get here. Jasper, not far from the ley line chamber, you discover that those two black canvas duffel bags that you dropped mm -hmm. in the previous fight with the gargoyle are still here. Okay. Do you pick them up or I'll, do you leave them? I'll pick them up and put them over my shoulder. So, both of them. Yeah. What are, what are those? These are mine. I dropped them the other night when we got into the fight with the gargoyle the first time. Look, um, I appreciate you bringing this knife back to me. It's very important to me. I'm going to ask this. Has anything been done to it? Does it now track my location? Is it will be trapped in any way? No. Okay. Eva, do you plan to verify that statement or you let it go? Yeah, I would just see if I see anything. duration of Sense the Unseen is passive, so you can still use it. Uh, from the previous? Yes. I don't remember. You, but you will need to roll again. To, oh, roll again, okay. Resolve in aspects. So. Four successes. Four successes. There is nothing magical or supernatural about the blade that you can detect. Okay. Wow. So you continue your way out. Yeah. You reach the back door. Of course, the back door emerges through a system of mm -hmm. sewer tunnels and maintenance corridors out into an abandoned slaughterhouse in that weird neighborhood somewhere between Los Files, Glendale, and the no man's land of Griffith Park. You find Bosch and Vera waiting in the slaughterhouse for you. Bosch is sitting on a piece of old rusted machinery. Vera pacing back and forth impatiently. Finally. I appreciate that you've made it out without triggering anything. Well, you know, it was very helpful, your instructions. And we had our map. Yeah. You really lived down there. Yeah. Wow. You never heard of Home Bath and Beyond or anything? Not really my style. I see. I apologize that you were injured while down there. People who come down there who are not trying to hurt me are under my protection down there, and I'm sorry you got hurt. Maybe you should rent someplace else. Yeah, dude. I mean, come on. There's got to be a, a, a cooler hole somewhere. Come on. Both of you like magic, don't you? Well, <laughs> now that you mention it, it's, I got to admit, it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool. It's a good vibe for you especially, Jasper. I understand that. Um... Last we day. just wanted to make sure that you got out okay. Thank you. You good? Oh. 
Is hey, we my... got uh, we got a bunch of uh, messages from the crew. Oh, you got them too? Yeah. I guess everyone's all right. That's good news, isn't it? Um, I see. Don't ask. Okay. Is my car parked nearby? Yeah, that's right where you left it. Okay. Um, so is mine. May I uh, have a moment alone with you? Sure. Uh, thank you. I'm going to go over and see if I can, I don't know, have anything that I can help with the wounds of Bosch. Well, he's pretty torn open and burned, but uh, he's not going to flip into torpor. Mm. Vera is helping him out the door of the slaughterhouse and out into the parking lot. Okay. Are you accompanying them? I don't leave the building. You do not leave the building. No. Do you remain visible? Uh, I mean, unless I'm... Uh, no, I'm, that's too close. I will step outside the building. Very well. You will step outside the door. Yeah. Not going far, though? No. Okay. But I'm not listening. Look. This is really hard for me to say. A lot of this is really hard for me to say. Um, I was very hurt the first time I saw you with him. And you know, when I'm hurt, I, I can become mean. I know, I know. And I'm really sorry. I'm glad that you're happy. However, because I care for you so, so much, I did a little research. What do you mean? Jasper Hartwood, you know, he's from New York, too. Yeah. And I looked into some things about him. When he was alive, He was considered a bad person by bad people. Yeah, I mentioned somewhat. Did he tell you about the Blind League? No. But I didn't ask. He wasn't keeping it. Well, it was a big part of his life. And it was just a bad group of people doing bad things. I've known many bad people. I am just telling you this. So you can be careful. And frankly, right now, him and I seem to be getting on all right. So if you could just keep this between us, but please keep it in mind so you don't get hurt. Okay. Okay. I, um, I will, I'll, I'll send you a message soon, okay? Same place? Yes. All right, let's, um, I want to, I want to, uh, say bye to Jasper, too. He doesn't know that I'm speaking with you that way. Oh. Well, maybe you should tell him.
Oh, I... If I were him, it wouldn't make me very happy to have that, you know, kept from me. But I'm trying to help you. You're trying to help me. What are you, what are you, what are you trying to help me with? I know that stress must be doing something. He always does. He always did. Look. This order that we've kept, these rules that I've been following, this It's brought some safety and sanity to my very long existence. And kindred can change. Just like that, you know, old saying, people can change. Maybe it's not so bad. Regardless, he doesn't know, so I'd rather you didn't tell him. I won't. Okay. And look, I just... Just not in any... Just, I'm not expecting... I just want you to know that I love you. And that's all. So let's say goodbye to Jasper, and I'm... Yeah. Um, so I start walking towards Jasper's. You leave the slaughterhouse that is the disguise of the back door of the labyrinth. Exit out into the night. Jasper is not very far away. Vera and Bosch have left in Vera's car. Your car is right where you left it. And you know that you don't have too much time left if you want to keep your next appointment and catch the person you wanted to catch before the rest of the evening's festivities begin. I have to go. I have a lot to take care of. Um, mm -hmm. Look, if, um, if you guys need... Look, I, I understand that she was very, and is very important to you. And I get that. She's very important to me as well. I'm not. You wanted to meet Victor, right? Yeah. I'm sure we can arrange that if you. go to his place of operation. Yeah. And we'll get there. And we'll be there to introduce you. Yeah. You want to just come in my Cadillac? Mm, all right. That's, um, that's acceptable. I drive, um, you know what, stay. Give me five minutes. Okay. I want to go put these back inside. You can stay here with her. I'll be right back. Okay. Um, I appreciate it. Coming to help. And giving me my property back. And, uh, yeah. And helping me earlier. Jasper, what do you do with the duffel bag? I go back through... Uh, the labyrinth, home, drop the bags off uh, outside the door to my haven, still inside the labyrinth, 
don't want to bring them in until I know what's in them. Of course. Um, and then I... Uh, well, that would take rather a long journey. Quite a long walk. I, um, well, I drop them off inside, past the traps, and then I head back out. This right. seems like the perfect place to pause our vampire story for now. Hi, I'm Yev, and I'm Cannon. Backblaze sponsored season four of LA by Night. And I would welcome you to go to backblaze.com slash LA by night and give Backblaze a free try. We're an online backup service. We back up all the data that's on your computer. We store it safely and securely in the cloud, and you can get it back from us from anywhere in the globe. Go to backblaze.com slash LA by night. Start your free trial today.
Welcome back to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, L.A. by Night. We are Season 4, Episode 5, Pressure Lines. We arrive at the Maharani. It's been a long, tense drive. Probably silent. The Maharani is in North Hollywood, in the NoHo Arts District. It absolutely dominates its block of the neighborhood. The first thing you notice about the club isn't the amazing retro architecture or the beautiful exterior lighting. It isn't the security guards. It isn't the brightly lit marquee advertising the next acts. It's the big flag hanging from the edifice out front that sports, if you are not much mistaken, a symbol that has been commonly associated with Clan Ventru in the ages, a crossed scepter and sword, and above them, a crown. Settled. It's right out there flying on the street for everyone to see. He is nothing if not subtle. Hmm. Maybe I'll talk to him about that flag. I'm sure that'll go well. <clears throat> so, the Cadillac pulls up. Do you hand it over to the valet? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. You emerge from the vehicle. Jasper, have you made any indication to Victor that you're coming? Uh, yeah, I will have texted him saying, we're on our way with a Camarilla guest. Okay. Victor, any special preparations for your Camarilla guest? I actually get one of the cells down in the basement ready. Just because in case. Jasper and I sometimes define guest differently. Mm. So, <laughs> yeah. What about the security team? Well, the club's dark because we're all going to the party. That's right. It's just um, you, the security staff, and uh, whatever handful of mortal employees are necessary to get ready for the next night's business. Let's do this in the VIP, but but out in the open, like, you know, in the center of all the booths. Mm -hmm. So we have some room to maneuver if necessary. It And uh, none of my ties work. I got to pick another one up. So let me know this so we don't, we don't take too long here. I don't want to be late. You want me to time check you, sir? Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to mess up Nellie's night, and I gotta, you know, she's black and gold. And that I'm, much I understand, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, <laughs> guest. Cool. Hopefully, he means like happy guest, and not like guest. But do we know this guest, sir? He didn't say. I see. Which makes me feel like either we don't, or he was in a rush. I see. Well, I'm told that they've arrived, so I'll meet okay. them and bring them up. What'd they arrive in? Uh, a Cadillac, I'm told. Very nice. All right, okay. Something late model and... Okay, it's not like some like 1930s like wind up thing, right? Okay, yeah, okay. good. All right. Hopefully semi-modern person. Then. Uh, do get the license plate though and put someone on them when they leave. Always, sir. Yeah, okay, great. Wait, do, you, do I understand you want me to have them tailed? Yeah, just see, you know, gently. See where they go when they leave. Soft tail. Exactly. As they say. Bailey knows the drill. I'm sure they're following us, so. That's why I got so many cars downstairs. <laughs> I've made a note. All right, let's do it. I'm just gonna act natural, Campbell. Just send them in. Security guards. Exit the front door of the building to meet you. So, um, this is an arts district? It's called that. Yeah. I don't really frequent many places, so I don't know. Mm. Well, I frequent many places, but I don't know if I'd frequent this neighborhood much. Security guards appear to be led as a team by a tall, muscular fellow with short, sandy-colored hair 
who introduces himself to you as Campbell. Uh, Mr. Jasper, yeah. uh, Ms. Eva, mm. good to see you both. Are you, are you, are you okay? Uh, we're fine. Oh, yeah. I see. And Miss... Uh, you can call me Katya. Miss Katya, I'm Campbell. I'm the head of uh, Mr. Temple's security team here at the Maharani. Welcome to the club. Thank you, nice to meet you. We're here to make an introduction. That's what the boss said. So let's get you off the street and inside. He opens the front doors. Um, club is, if nothing else, extremely modern and palatial. No expense has been spared on the interior design and the fittings, the furnishings, the accoutrements. Nothing here is cheap or tacky or tawdry. It is super modern and it caters to a very specific modern taste in music and entertainment, but one could not say that it's crass in any way. The first thing that catches your eye when you enter the front doors of the club from the street are two huge ceiling to floor mirrors on either side of the front door. They're absolutely enormous. And you can only imagine the number of selfies that get taken here every night as the people enter in off the street. Mm -hmm. The main dance floor is flanked by two long, low, glossy black topped bars with a bewildering array of colorful alcohol bottles backlit in a very pleasing kaleidoscope of colored glass. You don't see many people here. A handful of, you presume, mortal employees performing whatever duties they have to get ready for the next night of business. There's an elegantly constructed stairway that leads from one end of the dance floor up to a balcony level. And it is in this direction that Campbell guides you. Up the stairway to the VIP area. The VIP area is quite extensive. It's dimly lit for VIP privacy, and it hosts dozens of uh, soft black leather couches and easy chairs arranged in intimate little conversational cubicles and semi-private areas. It is here you find Baron Victor Temple. Tonight's night, y'all. Hollywood, Nelly G, taking over. Come through, holla at your boy. Victor Temple, everybody. Hello. Hello, mm. Baron Victor Temple. Of course, I know who you are. It's nice to meet you. Mm. And, and you are? I'm Katya Vanova. Oh. I'm a friend. Oh, I know Eva. Hmm, well, welcome. It's um, always a pleasure to meet a friend of a friend. Yes, yeah. she's important to me. Uh, Victor, yes. I wanted to come and make the introduction. She was helpful earlier with what we talked about. Ah, yes. Mm -hmm. um, Campbell uh, interrupts you, sir. Sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt, sir. Um, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep on with the project. Mm. Uh, I'll give you up, keep you up to date on the time, but um, if something strange happens, we. There's a there's a new laser light show we're working on for some of the participants. It's ah. been um, it's a work in progress. Fascinating for performances that happen here. Uh, yeah, if you notice right down there, that's where the DJ booth is right now. Like there's a, there's a stage that slides out. Um, you know, we 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 do the small shows, but it's kind of like a lot of world premieres we do here. Oh wow! Influence stuff, get people talking. You know how it is. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's going to be terrific, but we've had a few problems with them. <clears throat> with the lights. It's, it's a work in progress, Campbell. Yeah, everything up here in the VIP area, has, VIP area has been switched out just like you instructed. Perfect. So we're going to get to work now on the right side of the main floor. I would rather not run the test just now, though. No? So sure? not, not the full okay. test. Uh, Campbell turns around, leans over the balcony railing and shouts down to somebody. Yeah, um, kill it. No? I, just, I wouldn't like to disturb our guest. Understood, sir. Oh. Uh, that's the, that's the opposite of what I asked. Sorry, sir. Yeah, Sorry, right. Sir. No, it's work in progress. All right. Work, work in progress. Okay. Excuse me. Uh, good to meet you, Miss Katya. Yeah. Nice to meet you. I'll be downstairs, sir. 
Thank you, Campbell. Yeah, again, keep me posted on the. Uh, sure. Yeah, you've got. Um, you know, you've got uh, maybe an hour twenty. Um, I hate to be rude, but actually, I just do need to confer with Jasper just briefly because we have another. We have a thing tonight. It's a big deal. I know you are very busy. Yeah, yes. well done. No, I, I want to be respectful of your time too. I just. Thank you. Yeah. And I would go into the VIP side room with Jasper. To the skybox? Yes. Okay, so Katya and Eva, you see Victor and Jasper cross the VIP area and enter a doorway. Um, you can't see into the room from here because there are mirrors facing you on the outside walls. Uh, Katya is... Eva's sire. I thought Strauss was her sire. No. Okay. Is this good for us or bad for us? Sorry. I mean, as far sorry, I should preface as far as my memory serves or what I've been told. She is her sire. It could be a lie. I don't know. So Okay. Well that, until until otherwise. Until otherwise. Okay. Good for us or bad for us? I don't know. She came and helped us with the car oil. It's dead now. That's taken care of. But it didn't go quite as well as I had hoped. Everything is still intact down there. But um, she's now in Garrick's position. He mentioned last night that someone else was going to be the new uh, Tremere uh, uh, Primogen. That's it. Yeah. Um, right. Okay. That's her. All right. It's her now. Okay. Um. Apparently, Garrick was doing some unsavory things. Garrick was the one who left the gargoyle down there, not under orders from anybody. It was his own decision to do it. So he has been removed in order to prevent, I suppose, further obstructions of the truce. Unfortunately, while they were down there, uh, our own little obstruction of the truce happened. Uh, I will deal with it, but Eva decided it prudent to try and attack the Magic Castle while we were down there via the ley lines. Strauss's Magic Castle? Well, theoretically, yes. I do immediately just like Google real quick Magic Castle just to see if it's sure. like been destroyed. It has not been destroyed, but it has been damaged. Apparently that there was a very small 2.8, 3.0 Earth Tremor this evening in Los Angeles. Huh? And uh, during the tremor, the Magic Castle suffered some superficial damage. Uh, no guests were hurt, although apparently it was a close call. Earthquake in LA. The castle will be closed tonight and until its structural safety has been ascertained by the city authorities. Earthquake in LA. Okay, okay. I can, I can, okay. I can spin that. All right. Yeah, just I wanted you to have the information. Thank you. Before um, I will deal with the necessary things on my end so that, that doesn't happen again unless we want it to. But she did this on purpose? Yeah. Like, what is going through her head antagonizing that guy repeatedly? She wants to kill him. He wants to kill us. Of course, that that's not... She, it's not a rational thing. Somebody who has consistently abused her for a long time and now she has the power to kill him. What would you do? Hey, look, remember what we did to Chaz? Yeah. But we didn't do it the first time he walked I into know, the room. I know, I know. That wasn't the intention of going down there. It won't happen again unless we want it to. Did the gun come in handy? The gun, come, actually, I will return the gun to Victor. Jasper um, returns your it special Rafa's pistol. One round has been fired. Seven rounds remain. Um, it did do some damage. Almost likely to do more damage to myself in that confined space, but we're fine. Uh, sledgehammer came in more useful. That's what I should start calling this thing. I put this one back in the safe. One is on my person. This one I return to the safe. I but believe thank you. The, I appreciate it. Is it the golden the pistol that's non, on your person? The golden pistol is on me. This one is just plain old matte black. Back in the safe. Back in the safe. I appreciate you letting me use it, though. Well, I'm glad it helped some. It did. But I mean, it blew a big hole through the thing, so I assume it helped. <sighs> Jasper. Um, is Eva all right? I mean, she's not all right at all, I know. But I mean, like, globally. I have she... no idea. If you want my honest answer, I have no idea. 
if it gets to the point that you really believe she's not okay, I need you to say something to me. Yeah, I get that. I care about her too, man. I know, I and I know that you do in the way you care about people. I understand that. I will attempt to deal with it. There's a lot right now to take in. Last question before I do this. Is she here more as Eva Sire or is she here more as Camarilla Dignitary? I don't know. I'm confused. She helped us. She gave me my fucking knife back from the Camarilla. She gave you the knife back? Yeah. I was going to try and do it. I, I appreciate that, but she, gave, she just handed it back to me. I mean... Have you, like, checked we, it? Uh, I think Eva did. I don't know. Apparently it's fine, I guess. I asked her outright if it was bugged or anything like that, and she said no. Here's what worries me, man. I know you don't watch a lot of movies, but this is... Do you remember that movie, like, The Incredibles, a few years ago? When the bad guy was causing shit to save people from the shit they caused? Like, does this seem a little convenient that it's like, it's, I'm a Tremere to save you from a Tremere monster? And it the seems very suspicious, yes. Okay. Although I don't know what that movie that had all the action stars in it together in that one... I don't know what that has to do with No, that's the Avengers. That's incredible. No, The Incredibles was an anime. We'll it's watch it later. No, but, right but now. But you get the uh, the bad guy was causing the shit to save everyone. I, I get it. Yes. I don't know. Literally, this just happened before we drove over here. You know, hey, this, again, it's uh, silky smooth. Must be, what, Wednesday. I think it's Wednesday. Yeah, but, I mean, we'll leave you to it. I assume you can handle her and we have to go ready for the party anyway. You are coming to the party, right? Yes, I'm coming to the fucking party. It's, I, I want no ties this time. I know. Hopefully no dancing. Yeah. Maybe dancing? No. Uh, if some truly crazy shit happens tonight, mm -hmm. truly crazy. Yeah. Get out of there. All right. Campbell knows what to do. Okay. Great. Because a lot of our people are going to be in one place. Right. Okay. I'll get out of there. All right, let's uh, go meet the in-laws, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and when I open the door, mm -hmm. I make a point to be like, you know what her favorite flowers are, man. I'm telling you, it will mean the world to her if you right. just bring the bouquet. Okay, I will get flowers. Just blue roses. Yeah, I get it. There's somewhere in this city, if okay. anyone can do it, it's you. Great, I will try my best to go interact with flower people. I, just, I believe in you. Thanks. Eva grows stuff. Eva, don't you grow stuff? Mm. You brought us all those flowers before. I just didn't. Yes. Well, I found those. But yes. Right. Blue. Convince we can, we can bring blue flowers. Just, it'll mean a lot to her. It's a big night. Well, <sighs> what's a big night? Like I apologize. Sorry. It's um, our associate, our colleague, Nellie Griffith, is the new Baron of Hollywood. Yes. Yes. I, yeah, I heard. I heard. Well, there's an event tonight, and a formal invitation has been extended to Camarilla dignitaries, which I'm led to believe you are one. Congratulations. Yes. Yes. Um, I don't know if I can make make the party. Uh, that we had an accident tonight, uh, so I think I'm going to be working. Hmm. But I do hope you have time to talk with me for a while. Of, of course, but just by chance, Roosevelt Hotel tonight. You are, in fact, welcome. Um, this accident, is it anything that I could be of some assistance with? I think so. Uh, we should go get ready. Yeah, we need to get out of here. Yeah, we'll see you tonight. Just yeah. Like, big, like, like. I understand big. what Nelly likes. If you think it's too big, like, go twice as big as that. Right, so two roses. Maybe multiplicative, but yes. We'll get it. Like, are, are you okay? You look like. Um. Uh, Little mm. hurt, but I'll mm. be fine. Fight, you know. The, the thing, right. Right. You guys, I, hey, I'm not here to kink shame. What you guys are into, it's, uh, it's not my business. Why is everybody talking about that the last couple of days? It's not my, I said it, it isn't my business. I don't, what you guys do on your own time. Okay. Look, we're gonna go. Bye, I got you. I've, uh, I've always loved that color on you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. We, you and I, we have a problem. <clears throat> the 
first of all, I want to say that I've, I'm actually a fan of yours. Um, I appreciate your industrious nature and um, the business you've created for yourself. Uh, the Valley is a fascinating place with a lot of valuable resources. Big fan of Burbank and Van Nuys and all of it. Um, you see, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a New Yorker myself. Mm, mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's, it's nice to be somewhere different. Mm. Um, I do a lot of traveling for my job and, uh, well, thank you for welcoming me into your I believe these nights more than ever, diplomacy is important. Like whatever our differences is, are, sorry, I'm having trouble wording, but whatever our differences are, I think it's important that we be able to at least be able to talk to each other. Absolutely. What, what is your line of work, by the way? Um, well, I, I, I work for the Tremere. Um, I actually just took Garrick's place um, he's going away for a long time, <laughs> and I will be here. He he mentioned that there would be a replacement. Uh, he, he was here last night. You spoke to him. I did. He was on his way out of town, but he stopped by to be passive aggressive. <laughs> Sounds like him. Mm. Sure, mm. he did. Although that thing he does with the glass balls, though, that is that is interesting. It's like a David Bowie labyrinth thing. I mean, that that is full. The the sideburns in the glass ball thing, the man gets full credit for. I mean, he's rather affected. I uh, I wouldn't compare him to David Bowie. Just just the, remember labyrinth. Did you? Yes, of course, with the with the ball yeah, but, and the but and the, the parallels in there. Though. The worm. Yes. Right. That was with the worm that wanted. There's the, a. No. Would you like to come in and meet the missus? That little. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, 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 that is, yeah, that's the same, the same one. Yeah, mm. right. But besides that, you're correct. The parallels in there. Yes. But. All right. Well, Garrick is an asshole. Um, he is the one who created the gargoyle in the labyrinth. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how familiar you are, familiar you are with the labyrinth. What have they told you about it? The labyrinth has been a bit of a sore subject in that I'm not supposed to speak of it, but I, I, I will make a, a simple a simple deal with you. Uh, I will not insult your intelligence if you don't insult mine. I would never do that. It's It happens so much. People come here, they see the club, the youth, and they think, right? Oh, yeah. I can uh, tell you're a very bright young man. <laughs> Full disclosure, I think I've set foot in the labyrinth twice, maybe three times. I don't mean to mislead you. It's just been a very eventful few months, honestly. Um, and it is a twisting Lovecraftian meets Escher hellscape that I really don't care for particularly, but it means a lot to people that mean a lot to me. So, Understood. and it is most importantly, in my domain. It is in your domain. <clears throat> um, <laughs> the labyrinth is very dangerous, not just to your domain, but the entire city of Los Angeles proper. So in a sense, it belongs to everyone. Now, before Nellie took over uh, for Abrams, he actually made a deal with Strauss um, that we could spend time at the Magic Castle. You see, uh, Tremere, we've practiced magic, uh, but we've also enjoyed having our hand in the entertainment magical arts as well. It's As you saw with Garrick with this stupid ball. Right. <clears throat> so we've been working there. Garrick put the gargoyle in the labyrinth. 
I went to go try and fix it and help, and Eva tried to destroy the magic castle by using the ley lines. I do believe she was not successful in this, correct? No, she was not successful. There will be damage, there will be property damage. Was anyone harmed? Pretty intense. No one was in ha- no one was harmed. Some right. history was harmed. I mean, some of those stained glass windows are from the 60s. I'm I like to consider myself both a student of history and believe it or not, a albeit minor student of the occult, so I do have an affinity and uh, I have an appreciation for what you all do, even though I do not profess to understand it at all. Um, So let me say a couple of things, since you gave me a lot right there, let me give you some stuff. Um, I cannot speak for whether or not Baron Nelly will continue your arrangement. She is very shrewd, so I do not believe she would rescind it. Uh, if for some reason you all feel Hollywood is no longer tolerable, iconic landmark though the Magic Castle may be, we may well be able to work out a place for you all to carry out your work in the valley. If that is something that enters into the discussion. I realize the Magic Castle is more than a building, it is an institution. But if for some reason it becomes intolerable, perhaps we can work something out. Two. The purported attack on the Magic Castle. How significant is this really about to be? Because earthquakes happen literally dozens of times a day in this town. Magic experiments go awry. Things happen that we don't for project or foresee. I'm asking, not telling. How bad is this really? My people, they know that it wasn't an earthquake. We just have ways of knowing. However, um, that's a good cover, and it's, it's already the cover that um, the news is using. Oh, why would they expect anything different? No, of course not. <laughs> um, I'm more concerned about this happening again. I'm more concerned about Eva losing control and about Jasper's influence on her. Um, Since I've gotten to know them as them, the unit they've become. We call them Jebba. That is so nauseating. (laughs) They are too. (sighs) They've been in danger quite a bit. They've been in trouble. Um, and you are a very, very influential person. I would like you to use your influence on them to keep Eva safe and out of trouble as best you can. And what does that look like to you? I think... I don't want him in her life. And I know that there's nothing you can really do about that. But I also can tell that you and your coterie are close. If you could just keep an eye out for her, I would appreciate it. I also do not want anything bad to happen to either of them. They have been subjected to substantial danger, but quite frankly, that was why I worked so closely with Strauss himself to try and arrive at a truce. Because crazy flaming danger in the streets night after night was bad for everyone. It's bad for you all, it's bad for us, it's bad for the masquerade, which contrary to what some people think, I do greatly value because it is our number one defense against our real enemies, 
the humans, the Inquisition, the ones that see us all as terrible monsters and want to see us all burn and do not care about Tremere or Ventru or Camarilla or Anarch. They are our real enemies. So yes, as such, I would like everyone to be safe and out of trouble. It's so strange, it's so funny, because you and I see eye to eye on that in a way. The Inquisition is our biggest enemy. However, I don't think we're going to be safe from them by posting flags with clan symbols outside of our businesses or by live streaming, or by sending second-rate body doubles to daylight events. Th that guy could be my brother. No, he could, he could not don't, be don't, your don't, brother. Come on. Yes, you are more handsome than him. First of all, I don't, I'm, I object to you using tactics that absolutely will work on me. Stop. But it's true, you are. You're better looking than him. I mean, again, he's tall in the glasses, it's fine. But it, I do things very intentionally. Yeah, okay, I've got the Ventru logo outside, but you know what that means or you don't. You, the, no one is going to look at a crown and a sword and a scepter and be like, hmm, I wonder if he's an iconic supernatural monster. No, that only means people with the eyes to see it. Abrams has rose bushes all over Hollywood for the same reason. You all live in the magic castle. Black rabbits. Come on. It is a dope banner though, you gotta admit. It's it's fine. It's not it's not safe. No, I don't think it's safe. Look, no, it the safe. Inquisition it a, a long time ago the Inquisition was just people with clubs mm -hmm. and with you know swords coming after us in, in the nights, and that was that was what it was, and it was just easy to evade. But now they have you know hacking technology. They have weapons of mass destruction. Yes. I understand. They have this. This is a different fight. I completely agree with you, and I've spent the last years of my life trying to convince everyone of that. I have every manner of security money can buy on this device, and yet I'm still sure. I'm still sure there is a level of surveillance taking place that I don't want to have happen. But what's the alternative? I cannot do fucking quill and parchment like what Vanivar wants. I can't do it. I can't do codex cylinders that we're going to decrypt or messengers that we send and then you kill after they those deliver the message. Those weren't so bad. Those, those were fine. I mean, honestly, it is kind of cool. I think if I got a decodable cylinder, I would <laughs> kind of be pumped about it. But you understand what I mean? Because sure, I can turn my back on mass media. I can turn my back on technology, but still our enemies won't. But there is a, there's, there's, there's a, there's a middle ground there that I don't even think you're close to. I, I think if you scaled it back, look, I have I have an Instagram. I do, I have one, I have one, I use it. Should, yes, because don't keep this from the world. This is beautiful. <laughs> no, the crosses and everything, though, I'm, I'm into this though. Like this, this is a look. Thank you. This is. It's just, it's my everyday thing. It's not, it's just, just easy. We gotta be what we are. Believe me, I understand. What I mean is I have an Instagram and, and, I, and I use it and I'm only, I only have a few, you know, friends? What yeah, is it? I do followers, yeah, followers. yeah, right, yeah, huh? Yeah, and it's people I'm close to, mm -hmm. and then, it's, you know, I use it to check on people that I need to keep an eye on. And that's it. I'm gonna ask, I'm you, not... the, I'm gonna ask you the same question I ask everybody. You don't even have to tell me right now. You can go check, you can circle back to me. Because everybody, because you're not alone in this, even the other barons are like, bye, you're streaming too much. Tell me anything I've said on one of these streams that violated the masquerade, anywhere, ever. Ever. You can't, cause I don't. Yes, my face is on there. And the act of having someone know that I exist and say words carries a certain amount of risk, sure. But I've never said the words Ventru on here. I've never said the words Camarilla on here or truce or war or ghoul or feeding or, it's, I, it's this, this is, this is my masquerade. It, will this still be your masquerade in a hundred years? I mean, what I'll happens be, then? I'm like, hopefully like holograms of me and shit are walking around doing stuff. Like, the, wouldn't that be amazing? 
I mean, I get it. I get it. I get it. I do things different than everybody. But I got to tell you, Miss Katya, I feel like I've also accomplished things no one else has accomplished. Because it's true, I am young. Which is weird, because those aren't words I thought I would say, but I routinely deal with people that have been around for centuries. So yeah, I'm, I'm young. And yet, here I am, still at the table, still making moves. You and I are still having this conversation. Because you have to. Because of the position I occupy. And I don't mean that in a predatory way because I'm also discussing this with you because of the position that you occupy. Perhaps we'll can, just agree to disagree for now. Can I add you on Instagram though? Uh, you don't have to follow me back though. Uh, I'm, it's a private profile. It's. Just, you, you don't have to accept it, but I just want you to know I'm sending it. I'm sending it. Oh, God. Just think about it. Just don't fight it. I'll make a deal with you. I, you let me follow you on Instagram, and I will at least talk to Jasper about what you're asking. No, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't. There's something else I'd rather have. We come to it. Usually Tuesday night's business night, but I remember we're here and now we're here. So yes, let us talk. I would just want some advice on how maybe to convince Nelly to let us stay in the castle. I thought maybe I could get her a present, a sewing machine or a uh, just, I don't know if there's a designer she likes. Uh, She's the designer she likes. Um, eh. You all had an understanding with Abrams. Explain to her what Abrams saw. She's not unreasonable. He did once say that he thought the castle would be a great place for her to have a fashion show. I mean, again, if you're going to insist on attacking our vulnerable points. Yes, I believe that sort of thing would appeal to her. It is a, I was going to say magical place, but that sounds bad even for me. But I mean that it is something special and being able to have access to something special. Do you... Um, by chance, happen to know a fellow by the name of Edison? Just a guy from that part of town I ran into the other day. So, sorry. Mm. But I think um, Nelly understands the value of stability and consistency. And quite frankly, let's say she comes back and says, no, you can't stay then we're on the hook to try and get you guys to leave and no one wants that. Mm -hmm. So again, it is her domain to run as she will, but I believe she would see the wisdom in maintaining that relationship. Understood. That would be my counsel to her if she were to ask me, but of course I cannot force her to do anything. Mm. Has she ever done a show here? Kind of. We did a lot of things at the old place, and then we had to move out of there fairly abruptly. But uh, she helped design all of this, and I mean, in many ways, like her fingers are all over this. It's nice, isn't it? It is beautiful. It's a unique aesthetic. But can I ask you a question? I consider Eva to be um, my friend. We have risked together we have risked for each other and i would again but i would not say that we have a completely close and open relationship where she is some sort of open book to me hmm. but what i did know of her sire was that they were dead and strauss killed them And 
and yet you look very much alive, you know, so to speak. I can see why she might have thought I was dead. Um, I embraced Eva, and I took her with me to Vienna. It was really a beautiful place. And for a while, that was the best time of my life. Um, but then I got caught. And there are consequences. Because you all need permission and those... Yes. Um, for good reason, we need permission. Uh, you know, you can't just embrace any idiot off the street. I mean, luckily for me, she's amazing. She's smart and beautiful talented, so good at what we do. Sometimes I think if she just had discipline, she would be better than me. Um, I've seen her do tremendous things. I've seen her work wonders. But we didn't know that at the time. We didn't know how amazing she was, so when I got caught, um, some very unpleasant things happened to me. Um, things that hurt me. It was extremely hard for me. However, I think in some ways it might have been harder on Eva. because she saw me go through it. She left and I'm sure she presumed I was dead. I... I've healed a lot. And, you know, the Strauss is very traditional. I appreciate tradition. I feel protected when I have a routine, when I have a way of doing things. Everything operates better. But Strauss, believe it or not, is bipartisan in matters of the Camarilla and the Anarchs. We, um, we just want the Tremere to be safe. We want to be able to practice and educate ourselves and grow strong and protect each other like a family. You know, it's, it's hard when two sides are screaming at each other. Everything you just said is beautiful and I, and I appreciate you sharing it with me. And I would not wish to offend you by presuming too much in these mere minutes we've sat here speaking. But are you familiar with something called Stockholm Syndrome? Um, I've heard the phrase, I don't know. It is when uh, someone can be abused to such an extent that they come to love the abuser. I don't know much about Clan Tremere. I've had a few associates and most of them were neonates. I feel like every time someone says that word, like, you know, Strauss, like, gets an extra vial of blood or something. <laughs> but 
I understand your order and your organization and your st structure, but what I heard from what you said is you chose Eva not for her magical proclivities or potential, so you chose her for something else and then swept away together to Vienna for the best years of your life, which is beautiful, but I know exactly what that means. And the people that took it from you and apparently tortured you to the extent that she believed you were dead and has dedicated her life to revenge, you are now advocating for. That cannot be healthy. Look. Where do you put someone like me? Someone who believes in order in protection, in secrecy, and believes in the oath of the Tremere. Because that is who I am. And even if I did have an issue with Strauss, which I don't, where do you think it would leave me to tell anybody? He's not so bad. If I could convince him to free you, would you want to be free? Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. He'll know. He'll know. I'll say nothing. Oh, this is stupid. This has been... I have not been able to do anything right. This is my first day and I've done everything wrong. You have done no such thing. You have represented your clan and you have represented your faction and you have advocated for your child. What else can anyone ask from you? Just um, one. I kind of go over to the railing where presumably where we're not, some people are walking around. And I say, um, I activate awe. But not near her. I mean, I guess you would see me, but not directed at her. And I'm like, could you all... Uh, do me one quick favor and just forget anything you heard up here. Half a dozen faces look up at you as you stand on the balcony, <clears throat> looking out over your domain, your club. Their eyes glaze over. And after I kind of recognize that like blinking motion, I just say like, no, the lights, it's great. Keep at it. Thanks again. We're not testing it tonight though. We're just, just the hardware. We're not, yeah. Campbell, who wasn't visible from his vantage point near the security room door, <clears throat> crosses into your line of sight and stands at the foot of the stairs. You, Campbell, how are we doing on time? Mm, maybe a half an hour, sir. Maybe. You, uh, just let me know. Again, it's a big night. I got a got a text. If Miss Therese shows up, will you see her? Baron Therese, I mean. Yes. Yes. Um, do not bring her up. I need to discuss with my current guest whether or not she wants to be here if that happens. But yes, yes, uh, yes. Apparently it's not a, it's apparently it's not a certain thing yet. It's just a maybe. Well, I, I wouldn't 
there's a number of reasons why I wouldn't turn her down. Definitely. Yes, sir. E, Campbell. Gas up the limo. I'll get it ready, sir, right away. Yeah. I'll have Bailey on it immediately. Yeah. I mean, yeah, just we're gonna like stunt just a little bit. Like I don't want to show up the bell of the ball, but I mean just just a, a little. Yes, sir. Uh Miss Katja, um, we took the liberty of um washing your vehicle while you were uh, our guest. Uh, have you been driving in some really dirty, dusty areas lately? Yeah, it's called Los Angeles. <laughs> right, I get it, I get it. Oh, the New York is good. not in Los mm -hmm. Angeles. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's... it's not I name. love it's not New York. Are you from New York? It's not yes, no. oh, I love Manhattan. <laughs> yeah, I saw The Lion King there last summer. Amazing. I'm sorry. I thought it was great. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'm... Uh, sorry, sir. I'm yeah, on we'll... it. I'm on it. Um, full disclosure. Maybe. You like The Lion King. I mean, who doesn't, you know? What, what, what is it? Uh, pink pajamas, Z penguins on the bottom. Pink pajamas, penguins on the bottom. Yeah, but, um, uh, I might have uh, another Baron stopping by. And if so, I want to give you plenty of warning. If you want to, you know, not be here when that happens. I know not everybody is diplomatic as I am. Understood. Just, uh, they're not here yet. Um, Do you ever wish... You can have a drink. I mean, like not what we do, but like a, you know, like a sea breeze or. Uh, I mean, whiskey rocks or. You know, somebody brought me my very favorite thing. It's a gentleman jack. It's like sunshine dipped in happiness, and I tried it, and it was just. <laughs> You know, they, but there is the next best thing, though. If you if you get, you know, uh, uh, human that you would like anyway, and you sort of kind of pump a little bit of it into them, you can kind of like vicariously get a little bit of it when it's in the blood. Yeah. Know? It's like an accent. Mm -hmm. I've done that with wine. Yeah. It's uh, vampires and vino, right? Like, what else is there? It's so good. <laughs> it, let me ask you this, though. Um, even though I appreciate getting to speak freely with someone, and if there's anything you want to know uh, on, on my side, please don't hesitate to ask. But um, was there any other um, specific business we had to discuss? Not that I'm trying to rush you out of here, but if my associate arrives and you decide to clear out, I don't want to leave anything unsaid. Um, well, let's see. <laughs> Uh, someone close to me always says that princes come and go and clans are forever. I am very aware of uh, Vannevar's behavior. Have you noticed anything? Well, the cheese is sliding off his cracker. Yeah, no, it's everyone knows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to let you know that I'm... I'm working on that. And that... I think everything's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. I need more information before I can... But... I think I've come up with something that might help figure out what's going on. If he's asleep at the wheel, who's... Driving? Yes. Exactly. I mean, I have my theory, of course, but... I'm so new to this place. I mean, I'm still getting to know everybody and, and what's... Um, but myself and some of my... Fellow Tamir, we're, we're on it. Um, I feel you and I have started out with a good working relationship. I do need to say something that you probably don't expect me to say, but it's true. I 
I don't care whether or not Vannevar remains prince because for a lot of obvious reasons, I don't really recognize it anyway. But I do, believe it or not, have a vested interest in seeing no lasting harm come to him if possible. I would rather he not be harmed if possible. And I fully understand that even if he were 100% cognizant of his wits, he wouldn't just step down and leave. But he's, uh, we have the same blood. He's old. He's, he's a museum wrapped in a library covered in a, a masterpiece from Van Gogh. Like it, it, that should be allowed to continue. Mm. At least until circumstances become such that such a thing cannot continue. But I would, I would rather no harm befall the man. I said it to his face and I don't think he believed me, but I meant it. I understand. I, I don't know what you might have heard about me or maybe what preconceived ideas you have about. Tremere shit? Yes. <laughs> I am not into hurting people. However, if you try to hurt somebody that I care about, I will make you wish you were in your final death for a very, very long time. I think that's something we have in common. Can I show you something slightly strange and hopefully it won't be too weird? Just a little strange. Okay. I lift my shirt where I have the scars from where strikes clawed me. The skin that Victor shows you is marred by <clears throat> four long, ragged, jagged wounds on his undead flesh. Um, it looks like someone took a uh, some sort of strange, sharp gardening implement and dragged it across the tissue. Can't, uh, I healed it up, but I can't get rid of the scars, but um, it, a lupine was coming after um, uh, my ghoul, uh, my friend. Mm -hmm. I had to intervene. Wow. <clears throat> but I know, uh, I understand the sentiment. <clears throat> Was your friend all right? Yeah, 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 she's good. Yeah, she's good. A lot has changed, but she's good. Okay. Yeah, she's good. Um, and I hate to make our pleasant conversation weird, but while we're cards on the table, let me put mine. I feel that way about Jasper too. And if he were to come to some harm. How well do you know Jasper? I mean, how well do any of us know any of us? Jasper lived a very strange life when he was alive. I know because we're from the same place and I, I, I've been worried about Eva, so I've been looking into it. When he was alive, somebody died in New York, but killed. And at the same time, Jasper disappeared. A lot of people think that he did it. He was involved in this group, like a Perhaps someone would call it a cult. That's just what I found out about him through my contacts. And who knows, maybe it's... Does this cult have a name? 
Yes. I'll write it down for you. Mm. Please do. I would ask you to text it to me, but I feel like that's not that's not in the spirit of what we're discussing here. I am also going to give you the number I'm keeping. Sir, Campbell from the, yeah, Campbell. the stairway. Um, the message, the message is a question. Will you receive Miss Therese? Yes. Uh, Baron Therese, I'm sorry, I keep getting that wrong. Please I did not. the same thing with Miss Nelly. I'm Baron Nelly please, last night. Please do not get it wrong in her face. Like, don't let her hear you get it wrong. She's very... I've heard things. They're all true. I see. Uh, a couple of minutes. She's on the way? Yes. Apparently she's- Please. I will let you go. I will go. My car is washed? Uh, it's washed, waxed, ready to go. The exterior is all detailed. We'll have it pulled around front. If I could uh, impress upon you one last time. I would like you to let Strauss know that I would like to speak with him. Please don't talk I, to him about me. I give Please. you my word that I will not mention you to him. And that counts for a lot around here. I won't bring up this conversation, or at least beyond your function as Tremere Primogen. I don't know if I could do that. I, can I think about it? Can I, can of I? Of course. I'll, I'll call you. However, just like you are worried about the implications to the truce about what happened tonight, I'm sure he will too. And I would rather be on the front side of that. What is he doing now, by the way? If he's no longer Keeper of Elysium, I don't understand the Camarilla oh, structure that well. Little, well, the first thing you I can know. understand about our structure is that I am not supposed to talk about it with you. <laughs> but I hear things. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Keep my ear on the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of rumors about what we do, who we are, how we do things. Well, let me tell you what I believe to be true and you tell me if I'm wrong. Oh, it's a game. Prince? Send a show, Keeper of Elysium. It's a big deal. So if he gave that up, one, who is the new Keeper of Elysium, but two, there's a short list of things that are more important than that. Mm. I, unfortunately, I mean, I know a lot more about what happens with us than you do, but on, on that matter, I, I feel I'm in the same boat as you. I just do my job. I understand. And I do it very well. No, not today. I think you've done an excellent job. <laughs> oh, fuck. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll even tell, uh, I'll, I'll tell them that like, you really, you really sweated me. You really gave me a hard time, you know? <laughs> I will. No, I, I, I will. This, this, you, you're, you're terrifying, and I, I didn't want to make eye contact with you, and I was afraid. But I think, you know, we're, we're going to be able to maintain the truce. Gosh. This whole meeting was very different than I thought it was going to be. I'm very different than everyone seems to think. Everybody, like, they all find out eventually. I still do not like the way Anarchs do things. And I still don't like your flag, but you, know, you are okay to work with. I will tell you, believe it or not, I got nothing against order. I got nothing against structure. The masquerade is useful. Having people that are keeping track of how things are done is useful. The problem, what we can't get down with is you're less than 600 years old, so I'm gonna have my boot on your neck. That's the problem. Because you know what the Anarchs are? At the end of the day, you know what the Anarchs are? Children. A meritocracy. We have what we take and what we can hold. That's it. Sir, she's here. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, um, you've got, sir, you've got less than 15 minutes before we have to leave. I understand. 
Uh, if we don't yes. leave by then. I completely understand. You asked me to tell you. I did. I, Thank you. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm sorry. I lead her to one of the VIP staircases, but not one of the secret staircases. Ah. So we're like famous people would be let in and so out. So she will not, in fact, encounter anyone coming in the front door. She will not. That is my intention, at least. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm like, if you, this door, I apologize. I would walk you out personally, but this will go straight down to the garage. If you can, Roosevelt Hotel. Oh, I can't. I can't. Everyone's no. going to be there. I, um, I can't. Yeah, you got a thing. And I don't really dance or anything like that, so. Just, you know, it just happens when we're around. I don't, yeah. But you can, <laughs> but you can just, you can lean back. You can just like, be like the, like the cool girl by the wall. Like this, like this Instagram post. Oh, come on. Look at um, this. Like you're all this like shadows and stuff. It's very dramatic. I like it. It's all I, right. I like studying. <sighs> Tremere, <laughs> unleash your inner Slytherin. Do you do, you, do that? Does that mean anything? Uh, well, I'm, uh, I, I, You're Ravenclaw, aren't you? Uh, 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 I don't know. I just, right. I've never, I never did the hat thing at the. Right. Just no Hufflepuffs are allowed in this establishment, or so help. Oh, I highly doubt I'm one of those. That's that would be funny if you're a Tremere primogen Hufflepuff. Until next time, no. ma'am. Goodbye. <sighs> Round two. But Campbell, remember what we discussed, please. Mm-hmm. Mm. Less than a minute later, the click clack, the sharp staccato report of very expensive, very high heels is echoing on your dance floor. About the time that I hear the click clack of the high heels, I just very dramatically and loudly, I'm like, Annabelle, I don't care. She loves blue flowers. Look, I'm, I'm on the way. I'm finishing up one thing. I have someone very, very important that I have to speak with, and then I will be heading over. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Just, I don't care how much it costs. Just make it happen. Thank you. Therese is dressed, as always, in severe black and white with a very fashion-forward flair to it. The moment I, I see her, I kind of make a point of putting the phone down and I'm just like, mm -hmm. Baron. Baron. And I do extend my hand to her. She takes it firmly. Mm -hmm. To what do I owe this pleasant surprise? Are you, you are coming tonight, right? The Roosevelt, like it's- I'll make an appearance. You're a very busy woman. That's all any of us can ask. Nellie Griffith. Baron. Nellie Griffith. Victor. Really? Baron Victor. I supported you. I appreciate that, and I support you, Therese. Do you? Did you want Jeanette to be Baron? I didn't seem like the kind of thing that she'd be into. You know better. We don't have a lot of time. I'm aware that you are about to leave for the soiree. I mean, so are you, though. I'll make a fashionably late appearance. You know, I understand that you've traveled some way and I, one, appreciate that, and two, want to be respectful of your time, Baron, and I do motion for her to have a seat. She sits next to you. I am at your disposal. I actually do kind of try to not make too much eye contact with her mm -hmm. without being rude. Really? <laughs> as much to make her feel like I'm not affecting her as well as not letting her affect me. Like, hey, <laughs> Like she gets to get a lot of like, mm-hmm, 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 the club listening, mm-hmm. <laughs> she adjusts her glasses on the bridge of her nose mm -hmm. and looks straight at you whether you look at her or not. I'm concerned. I have every respect for Nellie Griffith as an artist, as a designer, as a business person, as a businesswoman, as a Toreador but the Baron of Hollywood. You know as well as I do, it's going to be trouble. You know that. When she says that, I do turn and look at her. I smile, but I do. Now I know you've talked to nines. And Abrams. I've spoken to Fiona. Mm-hmm. We're not crazy about this idea. I thought we weren't supposed to use the C word. Victor.
Baron Temple. The Baron's Council has operated as a Congress of equals. It isn't perfect, but it has been better than the alternatives. I agree. A couple of things, Baron, Therese. Could we just, Therese and Victor, we'll, we're we're showing proper respect. You did support me. You did say things that were absolutely true that day about what was going to need to happen next. And people constantly underestimate and misjudge you. You do not get nearly the credit you reserve for your shrewd and tactical mind and your efficient way that you handle things. And I want you to know that I respect and appreciate that. Follow-up. Fiona had a piece of my turf carved out and given to her, which was not the council's place to do, nor was it her place to accept, nor have I forgotten that this happened. And yet the council chose to recognize her four square blocks or whatever as a valid barony. Now, Baron Nellie Griffith has been consciously given control of Abram's domain by the man himself. And by my estimation, nines, Victor, Nellie is three. Therese and Fiona that I'll even do the basic dignity as a fellow Ventru of recognizing is two. So even by the parliamentary procedure that we follow, we are where we are. I came here to offer the domain to you. <laughs> Remember that point that I just said about how my stuff wasn't your place, your place to give to Fiona? Nellie's domain, Abram's domain, is not yours to offer me, Therese. Victor, you know perfectly well how the game is played. The rules are what we say they are. On the night that Abrams came to us to make it clear that he was going to teach you a lesson. Those were the rules. Tonight, the rules can be different if we say they are. I thought you might appreciate a chance to take back what was taken from you and then some. Let me tell you how I see it, Therese. You've got about three minutes. And then your little, your minder is going to yell at you again. He's very thorough. Nellie has my support because her barony is built on the back of this one. The only reason there's not open warfare in the streets of Hollywood right now is for the support of me and Rodriguez, of course. It's been 24 hours. If for some reason Baron Nellie Griffith reveals herself to be incapable of running things effectively and judiciously, well then, of course, I will do what has to be done. But she has to be given her fair chance. She has earned her chance. Abrams intended her to have her chance. You, me, all of us will give her her fair chance. I'm glad we know where each other stands. I always respect you, Therese. And I feel the same way about you, Victor, which is why we are having this conversation here now tonight and not in a very different way. See you at the party. 
you know, uh, I haven't made it over to Santa Monica. I'm not in a long time. Like, I mean, you got all that ocean front. Like, I mean, I, I, I don't. Can we do something at the pier, Therese? Can we like have like a cocktail party or something? I'll do a record launch over there. That sounds splendid. Let's do that. I do extend my hand. She takes it. I'm like, always a pleasure, Baron. I do hope to see you there, and then hopefully Jeanette's gonna make it out too. Should be memorable. I think that's the kindest possible thing you could hope for. Good night, Victor. Good night, Therese. Let's hope you made the right choice. She doesn't wait for a reply. She stands, excuses herself, and sees herself out the front door. Busy night, and it's not over yet. There's a party to go to. There's a new baron to crown, a new chapter to begin. So, this seems like an appropriate place to end our vampire story for now. But before we go, this is the world of darkness. And in the world of darkness, nothing is as it seems, nothing. But everything, everything is connected. Okay, so like, let's say you get to call the shots and not Nell. All right. How would you do shit differently? <clears throat> I love Nellie to death. She's wonderful. But yeah, honestly, there are uh, a lot of ways I feel like she could be better served if she were uh, more willing to let me do my thing. Honestly, the fact that I've been mostly used for errands, for petty enforcement for I get used to a lot that. of stuff like this, you know, I, we could run this. We could really build something, a, a barony, a fucking empire. I know, I'm a kindred and I still have to do this shit. I'm coming from the, the FBI, the, the military background, you know, I, that's the way that I see things because it gets shit done. You get rid of your enemies, you clear the chessboard and you're the only piece left. You can then build up whatever you want from that. I've told her that's the approach she should take. It's just not what she usually, she's subtle, you know? It's, yeah. it works. It, again, she, she has a grace in what she does, but it's just not, it's not quite my style. Yeah, but that would be assuming that you always know who your enemies are. And I guess you don't, you don't always know. Yeah, I guess you don't. Especially with, with, with blanks. I, is it just me, or I know people are conniving and just, you know, they're shitty all over the place, but have you noticed that a lot of blanks, vampires, sorry, are just kind of assholes? Like you do, present company excluded, obviously, but. You're so kind. I, I, I'm all sorry. Of a I, all of my adventures over the last, you know, six, seven months, a lot of vampires is not, not nice people. Is that a thing that comes with being dead? Maybe it's, maybe it's a curse. Maybe it's the power. Maybe it's I can't eat French fries anymore. Fuck if I know. That would do it for me, for sure. But why can't you keep your humanity? You know, why can't you still just, why not just be human a little bit? What does that even mean? I don't know, I guess I don't know how it all works. Oh God, the lights are starting up again. I'm weird. I feel like that's, hang on. Is that a code? That, well, okay, yeah. I mean, that would actually would be Morse code, but if it's Morse code, it's gibberish. It's just random letters. I, I don't know, that could, that could mean? be something. 